Hey guys, what's up? This is Todd Wellens here. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most basic yet probably the most important concept when you're learning how to play the drums and that is your grip. Now if you watch different drummers, almost no two drummers have the exact same technique in terms of their motions through the air and how much they let the sticks bounce and stuff like that. But there are some basics that everybody needs to learn about the grip. So let's dive right into those. All right, so just set your sticks down for a second and just let your arms comfortably fall to your sides. Everything's totally relaxed. Now bring your hands back up and you'll see that your wrists are naturally in a loose hanging position. They're not locked like you're riding a bike. They're just hanging here. So then pick up, <laughs> pick up a drumstick and just put it into your hand from that position. So pull them up, put a drumstick in your hand. Same with the other side. And this is your starting point for playing. It's a very, very relaxed position. As far as how tightly to hold on to the stick, the analogy I've always heard is pretend you're holding a baby bird in your hand. If you're holding on too tightly, you're gonna choke it, but if you're holding on too loosely, it's just gonna fall out. So you want to find a middle ground that's loose and relaxed and comfortable, but at the same time, the stick's not falling out of your hand. As far as where the fulcrum or main point of rotation comes, it's kind of a three, three finger or two fingers and a thumb that are creating that fulcrum, your point of rotation. And that's going to be your thumb, your middle finger, and your index finger. And it kind of forms a triangle, if you can see that. And one more point is you want to have a little gap in between your thumb and your index finger. The index finger should hold the stick, contact the stick at approximately the first knuckle, right there. And so it's, if you do that correctly, you're going to have a little gap here. All right, let's move on and talk about the stroke. So the stroke is based on, or really identical to the throwing motion. If you're throwing a baseball over your head, you're rotating from your shoulder and moving your whole arm. And then at the last minute, you're right before you release the ball, your wrist kind of whips, does this whipping motion. And if you're bouncing a basketball on the floor, it's the exact same motion but just going vertically the same direction you know, you're playing a drumstick. So you're rotating from the shoulder, moving your whole arm, and then your wrist flicks at the last moment. And you can let the stick bounce all the way back up as far as, as, far as it'll go when you're doing this. And I said before, the, you're generally holding the stick with this you know, two finger and thumb fulcrum at the first knuckle on your first finger. But when you do this, the stick's gonna fly up and it's okay that it's, it's really hitting kind of at the base of the first finger. And then the, ring, the back two fingers, the ring finger and the pinky are totally off the stick. And so, when you bring the stick back up, you're kind of, it's like a catching motion. And you go right back to the, the fulcrum and the grip as it was before with your fingers back on on the back. So an exercise I like to do, and I actually do this every time I sit down to practice or if I'm warming up before a show, I'll, I call it the throw catch exercise. Um, but all you do is Throw the drumstick down and then catch it on the way back up. Utilize all the bounce in your pad or your drum. Catch, throw, catch. It's the exact same thing with the other, your left hand. All the way, full range of motion. That will happen when you're first practicing this. <laughs> and when you've been practicing it for a while like I have. Uh, don't be discouraged though, that's 
perfectly normal. What matters is you want to be loose and you don't really want to drop the stick, but it's, it's going to happen for a while. And then once you get a little bit faster, the motion is less of a full arm and shoulder motion and more of you're using more wrist. So it's just like just like bouncing a ball. And I should mention if you if you're interested in playing traditional grip, the concept is is the same where you start with your arm by your side, lift it up, and you want to rotate your wrist 90 degrees. And then you just put a drumstick in there. And the fulcrum from this grip, as opposed to the two finger and thumb fulcrum with match grip, kind of the triangle fulcrum, it's right between the meat, kind of the meat here in your hand between your thumb and your first finger. So when you're letting the stick bounce fully, the other, hand, the other fingers are totally off the stick. And you're just controlling the stick from right here at the fulcrum. And then when you catch the stick with traditional grip, you want it to rest between the middle finger and the way I was taught was the nail on your ring finger. You can hold it back a little bit if you want, if that's comfortable. The way I was taught was like this. Um, I find this grip very useful for more finesse type playing. There are plenty of guys that can power out a good solid backbeat playing traditional. For me, I feel like it's kind of hard to compete with the match grip backbeat, but again, there are plenty of guys that do it and can get a ton of power um, as well as finesse, which is just as important. Also, in case you're wondering, this practice pad I'm playing on is called a real feel pad made by Evans Drumheads. And I would highly, highly recommend getting one of these. This one I got about 15 years ago, and you can see, obviously it has some wear and tear, but still works great. It was about $35 or $40 back then, and it's the same price now, and I've put in hundreds of hours of practice on this, so I'd highly recommend it. So in summary, if you practice this throw catch exercise just two minutes a day on each hand, you'll start to see tremendous benefits to your playing. And if you're wondering what those benefits are, the first one is your drums will sound a lot better. The drums resonate longer if you're utilizing all this bounce as opposed to playing other with other techniques which aren't wrong, but the way I was taught for marching band was to grip the stick very tightly with all four fingers and leave no gap between the thumb and the first finger. And the stroke is just a rotation up from the wrist. And that's, if you try that, it's pretty uncomfortable as opposed to, to this technique where you're using all the bounce and you're using your arm. The second benefit is it's a lot more energy efficient. Again, if you're using this kind of more stiff technique, you're gonna get tired quicker. Whereas if you're using bounce, you can play for a lot longer and you get more power as well. And the third benefit is this technique, the same throwing motion and the whipping of the wrist is the basis for more a more advanced technique called the molar technique, which we'll talk about in another lesson. But that's basically used for faster playing, playing at faster speeds, um, but it's still based on that exact same whipping motion. So work this into your practice routine. I recommend doing it just before you sit down to play every day, and hopefully you'll find it helpful. And check out the links below. Uh, I got a couple great videos of Dave Weckl and Jim Chapin both teaching these concepts, and I found them both very helpful in my own playing. Thanks.